There we go then, guys. Uh, it was, uh, there was somebody with a qualifying ban. It was Joel Erickson for what he did in the sprint race in Bahrain. So uh, just a little fix there. Uh, nothing too major. I had to get to Twitter up just to check that, which was a bit of a pain. But uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with this then. So we're at the end of the pit lane with Alex Lynn. So we will wait and get this session underway. It is a 35-minute uh, a session as per usual here at the circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia. The first time we've been back here since season two. And uh, we're waiting to get underway, uh, of course, as uh, we've got some track action coming your way in the form of an academy car. That man being Pierre Gasly. So Gasly, uh, the first man out on track in the academy car. Out on track he goes as he heads down the straight towards the first few corners on the track. Flicking the car in. And uh, Gasly preparing to, uh, to start his... Um, his qualifying lap as he just goes out at turn three there and up towards turn four on the track. Alex Lynn out on track for uh, the Macamo for Panasonic Macamo Motorsport. Uh, the team boss Daniel Macamo now only Monster Grand Prix uh, as a result and uh, and uh, looking to make an impact if he can with that team after Waste Cuba sold off the team. Uh, Felix Rosenquist out on track for Red Bull Academy, so he's out there as well. And there is the black tipped front wing to pay tribute. To uh, the team boss's granddad, uh, the team boss's uh, granddad being Robert Hunter, of course. Uh, sorry, Robert Hunter uh, is the team boss of Red Bull Academy, I should say. That made no sense whatsoever, uh, that first bit. Jolly and Palmer out on track for Willow's Grand Prix. Now, they've been banned from the end of season test for uh, an error that, uh, because the person who owns the league uh, runs this team as well, they've been banned from the end of season test for making an error on Martini's budget. So, um, they, uh, they'll be banned from the end of season test, as is the GP3 team as well. So uh, you won't be seeing those two teams in the GP2 and GP3 end of season test. So Palmer out on track, as is Lucas Jora in the Vortex racing car. Nick DeFries out on track as well uh, for GOM Jr. Nobuhara Masushita out on track, as is Norman Nato. Lance Stroll out on track, Luca Giotto out there, as is Santiago Uishia, Louis Razia, and that's it. Pierre Gasly has just started his lap now there as he goes through up towards turn three. He'll now approach turn four on the track. Gasly will be the one setting the benchmark of time for everybody to beat around here then. As they go through turn three on the track, up towards the hairpin we will go. And uh, so, around the left hand then goes Pierre Gasly as he goes out of the hairpin now then, heading down the hill towards the chicane. And let's see what uh, Gasly will be able to do then on this lap. He'll be approaching the end of uh, sector two uh, very soon now then as he just flicks the car in. Through the right hand and now then using a lot of curb on the outside up towards the uh, I think this is called um, the uh, I forgot actually what this corner name is called in fact I've named it so many times I can't even remember the corner name now but now up towards the final few cores of the track for those of you unfamiliar this is the old uh, Catalonia layout the one that MotoGP will be using once again this season in 2018 uh, the track the layout where sadly. Uh, Louis Salom died, uh, I think, two years ago now. God, it seems a long time ago. But Gasly crosses the line now then, and he does a 122.411, so that's the benchmark time for him. Here comes Alex Lynn in the Makamo, who comes out of the final corner, and Lynn now then is going to cross the line, and he goes into second with that lap, as Rosenquist goes to the top by one-tenth of a second ahead of... Um, of, uh, well, I think it's nearly one tenth of a second ahead of Pierre Gasly. Here comes Jolly and Palmer in the Willows Grand Prix car heading out of the final corner. Now, Willows, of course, now have a Twitter account, so if you haven't followed them, I, I strongly recommend that you do. As into fourth place goes Jolly and Palmer, P5 for Lucas Yora, as it's P5 for Nick DeFries. Nobuharo Masashita crosses the line, and he goes to fourth place with that lap. Norman Nato crosses the line, and he goes to third. So third place for him. Lance Stroll slots into sixth place as here comes Luca Giotto in the EMR now then. And across the line goes the young Italian and Giotto goes to eighth with that lap as it's P8 for Santiago Uishia. Louis Razia slots to 11th and uh, that's that then really. And nobody else doing laps at the moment. It is currently Rosenquist fastest with Gasly in second and rounding out the top three. <clears throat> is Norman Nato, so they are the guys who round out that uh, at this stage as Gasly will be returning to the pits uh, this lap as he just goes around the uh, the, the right-hander and uh, back into the pits he goes then so uh, we'll quickly have a gloss over the top five as soon as uh, Gasly pulls into his box 
uh, which he does. So let's quickly have a look then at the top five. And uh, it's very close between the top two. In fact, Rosenquist, Gasly, Nato, Lin and Masashita. That's currently what the top five currently looks like. Uh, Ericsson not taking part, of course, because he has his qualifying ban. And uh, waiting for some more cars to come out onto the track. Louis Razier in the World's Grand Prix car. expected to come back into the, uh, the pits. <clears throat> Excuse me. As they now approach the, uh, the left-hander. And uh, as mentioned, he will be returning uh, to the uh, the pits. And of course, this weekend is a very packed weekend for IFMC. We've got GP2 action this weekend. And uh, along with that, we also have the first weekend for IFMC GP3. Uh, they are on this weekend as well, uh, the GP3 boys. And um, on top of that as well, we also have the... Um, trying to think. We also have... Uh, the top class as well, of course, this weekend as well for 65 laps of action here in Barcelona. I wonder if anybody else has gone out onto the track. Well, there has now. Mick Schumacher out on track, so doing what his teammate did a little earlier, earlier on. Academy trying to get both their guys out there um, first off. And Mick had quite a, uh, a, a very unlucky weekend in Bayern, as he said. He qualified very well in uh, the feature race, but uh, sadly... Uh, uh, a mechanical problem on his car ended his feature race and he wasn't able to capitalize in the sprint race so Mick sadly went away with no points as a result as uh, now going through the uh, the left hander on the track as uh, Mick Schumacher now they're heading down the hill towards the uh, chicane as Mick will be preparing to start his first flying lap of the day in this 35 minute qualifying session we have just over 20, 28 minutes left in this qualifying session here in um, here in um, in Spain, as uh, now Mick comes up towards the uh, the left-hander, so through around he will go, and uh, so there you go. Then so now Mick approaching the right-hander on the track, and uh, so Mick now then prepared to start his lap. Also on track we have Yuri Vips in the RSPCA uh, racing car, as is Dan Tictum, his teammate Sean Galayo out on track. Mitch Evans is also out there, as is Nobuhara Matsushita, Luca Giotto out on track as well. As is George Russell. He's out there in the uh, the Red Bull Academy car. As he just go around the right-hander. So out on track he goes. Uh, Sasha Fenestras out on track. As is uh, roommate Lando Norris. Uh, the the man who won the feature race in Bahrain. Uh, Mick Schumacher has just started his lap. Sergei Sorokin just came out onto the track. Santiago de Richa also going out as well. Uh, George Russell out there as well. The man that currently leads the drive. No, it's not. It's Felix Rosenquist. I do apologise. Rosenquist, the early championship leader, currently topping the standings by one point ahead of Russell, who's a further one point ahead of Norris. So very close at the top of the championship at the moment in GP2. But it's still early days. Anything could still happen. And uh, we can't really jump to any form of a conclusions uh, just yet now then. As we now go up towards... The end of the second sector. Mick Schumacher currently on his uh, his next flying lap as he now goes up towards the left-hander. And Schumacher now then going out of the corner up towards the final few corners on the track. And let's see what Schumacher will be able to do then. The man that's been loaned by AMP. And uh, so that's that as we go through the final few corners on the track. And uh, now let's see then what Mick is going to do. Schumacher now then crosses the line and he goes to 10th with that lap. So P10 for Mick Schumacher. As here comes Yuri Vips in the RSPCA racing car. Vips now then crosses the line and goes 12th with that lap. And uh, teammate Dan Tictum goes 13th behind Vips on that lap. Santiago Urishia currently in 8th at the moment. Is this going to be an improvement for him? Is he about to start his next flying lap, I should say? Sean Galayo now then, who's currently. Uh, yet to set a time in 17th. Goliath now then going around the final corner. Let's see what the Indonesian driver can do as he heads down the pit street. And Goliath crosses the line. And he goes to fifth with that lap. A really good time from Sean Goliath to get himself up to P5 there. A very good time from Sean. Here comes uh, Mitch Evans in the Vortex racing cars. He just negotiates through the final corner. And Evans now then, the man who won the sprint race uh, in Bahrain, crosses the line, goes to seventh with that lap. As here comes Nobuhara and Masashita, both Holy Trinity racing cars currently locking out row three at the moment in qualifying as Masashita comes out of the final corner and across the line he will go and he stays in sixth without that, no improvement for the Japanese driver. 11th still for Luca Giotto. Here comes George Russell in the Red Bull Academy. Let's see what the young Brit can do. Russell crosses the line and he goes to sixth with that lap, so P6 for George Russell. Sasha Fenestras crosses the line, 18th for him. 
as Schumacher goes back into the pits. Here's Sergei Sorotkin, uh, who's currently on a flying lap as he goes up towards the uh, the final two corners on the track. And let's see what Sorotkin is able to do then. Around the final corner and onto the pit straight then goes Sergei Sorotkin. And he only goes 21st with that lap. A very disappointing time for Sorotkin. Looked like he got held up on that lap there because he was surrounded by a lot of traffic. But Sorotkin, 21st and last at this stage then. Disappointing for him uh, at the moment. Eurecia improves but stays in ninth place at the present moment. As um, trying to look uh, for anybody else who's coming on the track. At the moment, the top five is Rosenquist, Gasly, Nato, Lynn and Galio. Gasly preparing to go out on the track to see if he can try and knock off Rosenquist off the top of the timing sheet. So Eurecia now then goes up towards the, uh, the right hander. As uh, now then, we can see that uh, Eurecia currently in ninth place at the moment in the Macamo. And uh, shows how much a weekend can change between Sakia and uh, and Catalonia, really. Two different tracks, and it's all down to the, the talent of the driver as well. And it's very clear that you uh, every driver seems to have a different skill around different tracks. Some drivers suited to other tracks and others not. But um, that's something that you always have to look forward to in GP2 and even GP3 as well. Um, because you never know in these situations as now going through the left hand and then there's Santiago Uishia as he just goes through out of that corner now then and up towards the uh, the right hander and uh, so out of the corner then he, he will go as he now approaches uh, towards the pit lane to go back into the pit as Felix Rosenquist the man at the top is now out on track uh, for um, for Red Bull Academy. Jolly and Palmer now out on track as well, as is Pierre Gasly. Norman Nato out there as well in the uh, the light race Sony racing car. Nato currently in third place uh, at this stage. And uh, so Nato now then just going through the right hander now then and waiting for some more cars to go out on track at the moment. And uh, that's that really. So we'll go to Rosenquist, the man who's currently at the top, who's preparing to start his next. A flying lap now then as he just goes through the uh, the right hander now then and around the uh, the final two corners then goes Felix Rosenquist and let's see what he's able to do then on this lap as he heads down the pit straight and across the line he will go to start his next flying lap down the pit straight he will go as he will now approach uh, turns one two and three on the track up towards turn one then goes Rosenquist flicking the car in and then around the left he will go. And now through turn three, flat as you go, trying everything you can to ensure that you get the best possible line through into that corner. Rosenquist now then out of sector one, then he goes as he flicks the car in through turn four there. Nicely done. So far looking like a, que cle uh, uh, a clean lap for the young Swedish driver. Uh, so he now just goes out of turn five. Down the hill he goes then towards the chicane. And that left hander isn't class as a corner for some reason around this track. So this is turn six and seven up towards the turn eight we will go. And uh, now down towards the uh, the back straight towards the uh, the left hander. A very long left hander it must be said around here in Barcelona. Trying to get as edge to the track as possible. Trying to make sure at the same time you don't go off the track very easy to understeer the car off. In that corner, but is Rosenquist looking at an improvement on his pole position time? Rosenquist now then through the final two corners, then up towards the final corner comes the Red Bull Academy driver. As of the final corner and onto the pitch straight goes Felix Rosenquist. Is going to be an improvement then for the Swedish driver, and it uh, is, but not by much. Only a 122.390. He only improves by a few thousands of a second there. So that's that then for Felix Rosenquist. As uh, now we look at Lucas Jura and Mick Schumacher and Nick De Vries who are just about to start a lap. As here comes Jolly and Palmer in the Willows Grand Prix car. And it uh, looks like Gasly's lap. I don't know if it got affected by Yuri Vips in any way. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if his lap got compromised there by the young Estonian. As now Jolly and Palmer approaches the final corner in the Willows Grand Prix car. And let's see what he's able to do then. Down the pit straight goes Palmer. And he does not improve. Looks like Vix also held him up as well. As uh, not an improvement for Gasly. And not an improvement for Norman Nato. Those two in second and third getting held up a lot. And including Palmer uh, by the, the LSPCA racing car of Yuri Vips. We now look at Lance Stroll in the GRM Junior. And let's see what he's able to do then. As he goes through the final three corners on the track. Up towards... 
the second to last corner and now up towards the final corner will go Lance Stroll and let's see what he is able to do then down the pit straight and across the line he will go and the GRM goes up to 10th place so Lance Stroll getting himself into the top 10 is up to as uh, I think that's still in fourth place is Alex Lynn doesn't improve on that lap but uh, I think Spain has proved to be a good track for him in the past it's just other tracks he's just been struggling at in the past with Willows Grand Prix Razia stays 18th no improvement for the Brazilian as we now look at Mick Schumacher who's currently 14th at the moment with a clear track in front can he improve uh, in that academy car as he heads down the pitch straight and across the line goes young Mick and he doesn't he stays 14th at the moment clearly this track not suited to the young teenage German as Lucas Jura does not improve and stays in 20th place. An improvement for De Vries, but he stays 15th. Only 500 is quicker than his personal best. Vips now on a lap. Looks like he's overtaking Gasly somewhere. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Vips' lap got compromised as a result of being surrounded by those three cars. Heading down the pit straight now then. And Vips does not improve. He stays 16th for the moment. As we now look at teammate Dan Tictum. As he goes through the final corner and onto the pit straight goes the young Brett and Tictum crosses the line and goes up to 15 for that lap so up to P15 goes Daniel Tictum and uh, so that's that for him really uh, so at the moment it's still Rosenquist top Gasly second Nato third Lynn fourth and then I believe in fifth place uh, in fact, I don't know who will be in fifth place at the moment. It is still Sean Goliath surprisingly. Norris got himself up to sixth place. Russell down to seventh at the moment uh, in qualifying at the moment, but Goliath putting in a very good perform, so a good performance here in Barcelona. Surprisingly, uh, at the moment, pretty much keeping the smile on Team Boss James Crossface at the moment, with uh, himself up in fifth place at the moment, and. Um Sorry about that, as uh, now we've got some tr more track activity in the form of Mitch Evans, the man who won the sprint race last time out in Sakia. As he now just heads up towards the right hander, just over, just under 18 minutes now remaining in this qualifying session to determine the grid for tomorrow's uh, feature race here in Catalonia. As now Evans goes down towards the hairpin, around the long left hander he will go, using a lot of curb on the outside there then as he will now approach the chicane. And uh, Evans now then flicking the car in and up towards the uh, the right hander we will go. And uh, now heading down the straight and up towards the left hander on the track. And Evans will do what he can to, um, to ensure that uh, he can improve from what is P11 at the moment. Not a good qualifying session at the moment for the Kiwi, Mitch Evans. He now just goes out of that right hander and up towards the final two corners he will go to repair his next flying lap and then down the pitch rate he goes Evans now then about to start his lap uh, anybody else on track well Sorotkin's just going out Sean Glyle out on track for Holy Trinity Racing Sasha Fenestras out there as well as is Lando Norris in the light based only racing car George Russell out there as well for Red Bull Academy Luca Giotto uh, Pierre Gasly uh, back out onto the track Santiago Uishia uh, Sergei Sorokin has mentioned and we'll be expecting Jolene Palmer, Felix Rosenquist, Nobuhara Masashita to also join those guys out on track. So let's try and get back to Mitch Evans who's 100th down off his personal best in the first sector there according to his steering wheel. And uh, now Evans down towards the left hand he will go. Out the corner using a lot of curb on the outside there as he heads down the hill towards the left right chicane. And uh, now through he will go up towards... The, uh, the quick right hander on the track, flicking the car in, using a lot of curb on the outside, heading down the uh, the back straight towards the uh, the left hander. And uh, so now through the left hander goes Mitch Evans as he will now approach the, uh, the final uh, three corners on the track. And let's see what, uh, what Evans is able to do then as he goes through the, uh, the final two corners then. And he'll now head down the pitch straight. And Evans crosses the line. Let's see what he's able to do. And he does not improve. Stays in P11 with that lap there. And then we look at Sean Glow, who appears to be down off his personal best in the second sector now. Then as he will now go up towards the left hander on the track. Glow now then getting close to the edge of the track as possible. As he now goes up towards the final three corners then. And let's see what Galio is capable of. 
and in towards the last two corners of the track then through the right and then up towards the final corner goes uh, Sean Galio and he will now cross the line and he does not improve he stays in fifth place for the moment as his teammate who's currently eighth starts a lap Julian Palmer starting one behind Sasha Fenestras goes up to 18th so an improvement on the Frenchman's part there here comes Lando Norris the man who won the feature race in Bahrain Norris now then across the line he will go and he goes up to third with that lap so up to P3 goes Lando Norris in the uh, the late race any racing car Norris getting up into the top three as a result here comes George Russell in the Red Bull Academy car let's see what Russell is capable of as George Russell crosses the line and he goes to fourth with that lap so up to P4 goes George Russell as Luca Giotto improves to go up to 12th with that lap. Here comes Pierre Gasly across the line. He will go and he goes fastest. Gasly goes to the top of the timing sheet. He knocks off Rosenquist off the top. Gasly now fastest. Eurisha improves to go up to 8th place on improvement from the Uruguay driver as we now look at Sergei Sorokin looking to be on a better lap as he's currently in 21st at the moment after being held up on his first flying lap Sorokin now then across the line goes the Russian and he goes up only up to 14th with that lap so only P14 there for Sergei Sorotkin. As we now look at Felix Rosenquist now then in the Red Bull Academy car. Rosenquist crosses the line and he improves to go back to the top of the timing sheet. So it was brief for Pierre but Felix responds and Rosenquist goes back to the top of the timing sheets getting in front of Gasly as a result. Uh, at the moment it looks like the front, I don't know if it was Gasly in second place last time in qualifying uh, in Sakia as Masashita goes back up to 8th place getting back in front of Eurasia. Uh, still 13th for Julian Palmer at this stage. But it looks like maybe the front two could remain the same again uh, for this weekend, uh, like it was in Sakia. But we will wait and see on that. I believe it was Gasly on the front row last time out in Sakia, but I'm not 100% sure on that. As the Red Bull Academy and Red Bull Academy and Academy uh, rivalry, uh, the Etihad versus uh, Red Bull Audi rivalry from the first two seasons, looks to be here in GP2 now. It appears. And uh, I think uh, they want to rekindle some memories if that is the case. As now into the pits goes Pierre Gasly in the academy car. As uh, he now just goes into his box. And uh, so that's that really. So top five, Rosenquist, Gasly, Norris, Russell and Nato. That's currently what the top five consists of. Speaking of Nato, he's going out onto the track quite soon now then. As Alex Lynn who's currently sick, he's now out on track uh, for Macamo, Panasonic Macamo Motorsport, the, uh, the South African team. And uh, so now around the right-hander goes Alex Lynn. And uh, he will be preparing to start uh, his next flying lap then. As he will now go up towards the right-hander on the track. And now coming out of turn four now then on the track. And up towards the left-hander will go Alex Lynn. As he now heads down the hill using as little curb as possible to go up towards the uh, chicane. The quick left right chicane on the track and uh, the Makama preparing to start his next flying lap now then as he just goes out of the uh, the corner there and now up towards the left hander will go uh, Alex Lynn as he just goes out of that corner now then heading up towards the final few corners on the track and uh, so he will now be preparing to start uh, he's next flying lap and it will announce on track. Yes, Nick De Vries out there for GOM Junior. We also have Norman Nato, Louis Razia, Mick Schumacher out on track. Dan Tictum, Lucas Jura, Lance Stroll, Yuri Vips. And we'll be expecting George Russell, Lando Norris, Mitch Evans to also be joining these guys out on track. So let's try and get back to uh, Alex Lynn. Luckily for him, Vips didn't come out in front of him to spoil his lap as he now goes through the first few corners on the track. And let's see what Lynn is capable of there. As he goes through turn three now then on the track and now up towards the right hander we will go. As uh, now through the right hander then goes Alex Lynn. As he gets onto the power as early as possible now then as he will now approach the hairpin on the track. Through the left hander heading down the hill using a lot of curb on the outside. Uh, flicking the car through the corner that isn't classed as a corner. The turn that isn't classed as a corner I should say. Through turn six and seven again using a lot of curb. Uh, around those corners now then so far looking to be a clean lap from the Brit as he now heads down the back straight towards the left-hander and let's see what Lynn is able to do on this lap now then as he flicks the car in and uh, getting as close to the outside as possible up towards the final three corners on the track then we'll go Alex Lynn 
heading out of the third to last corner up towards the second to last corner and then it will be the final corner for Alex Lynn and let's see what the Macamo driver is able to do as he heads down the pit straight and across the line he will go and this is going to be an improvement for him and it isn't he stays p6 with that lap there then as we now look at Norman Natto who's currently fifth at this stage just uh, a row behind teammate Lando Norris at the moment let's see what Natto is able to do on this lap now then as he goes through the final corner and onto the pit straight he will go and across the line goes Norman Natto and he stays in fifth place with that lap there then so as uh, De Vries well off there he must have made a mistake it appears because uh, look at the lap time there it appears that De Vries must have made a mistake on his lap must have gone off the track somewhere maybe down at turn three perhaps and uh, so De Vries now then 150.178 it's very clear he must have made a huge mistake on that lap there then Louis Razia goes up to 15th so an improvement for the Brazilian as we now look at Mick Schumacher who's down to 16th place looking to see if he can improve the teenage German now then round the final corner and onto the pit straight goes Mick Schumacher and across the line he will go and he improves but only up to 15th place at that time there so not a significant improvement for Mick as Dan Tictum crosses the line to go up into 11th there so up to P11 goes Dan Tictum with that lap as it's an improvement for Lucas Joe, but he's still effectively less because of Joel Eriksson's qualifying ban. Still 10th for Lance Stroll. So uh, that's Stroll still in P10 there. Here comes Yuri Vips in the RSPCA racing car. Vips crosses the line and he stays 19th for that lap. No improvement for the Estonian. As now George Russell in the Red Bull Academy car crosses the line. What's the time going to be for Russell? And he stays in 4th for that lap. No improvement for him there as Lando Norris crosses the line and he goes up to second with that lap so Norris now gets himself onto the front row so Norris now up to second place so a uh, good time there from Lando Norris to get himself in front of Pierre Gasly there as here is Mitch Evans in the Vortex racing car who just comes out of the third to last corner now then up towards the final two corners will go Mitch Evans and let's see what he is able to do then out of the final corner and onto the pit straight will go Evans and across the line he will go and he stays in 12th place no improvement for the Kiwi uh, as a result as uh, now Mick Schumacher now then going through the right hand as he now veers into the pits and uh, so that's that for him really and uh, so uh, at the moment then it is currently still Rosenquist fastest at this stage with a 1 minute 22.190 uh, at the moment as I try and look for somebody who's in the top 5 in the pit lane to see what the top 5 currently uh, consists of and at the moment I'm struggling to find one uh, at this stage uh, we'll probably see it now with George Russell when he comes back uh, into the pits uh, so we now just have over 7 minutes remaining in this session to determine the grid for tomorrow's feature race and so now Russell into the pits he will go and uh, his mechanics will be waiting for him of Red Bull Academy and uh, I don't know if somebody just passed uh, just went down on track there then yep Sasha Fenestras has just gone out onto the track for Lopez Racing Development and uh, currently uh, it's Rosenquist, Norris, Gasly, Russell and Nato uh, just just a tenth between uh, Norris and Rosenquist at that time around. Sean Galayo out on track it seems before uh, Sasha Fenestras. So Galayo out there now then for Holy Trinity Racing as we now go through the left right hander on the track. And uh, let's see what Galayo is able to do. As he just flicks the car in using a lot of the curb on the outside there then as they all now approach the, uh, the left hander. And uh, Galayo through the left hander now then he goes. And he'll now approach the final few corners on the track. And um, so now out of the corner now then up towards the final two corners then will go Sean Galayo. And uh, he now approaches the final corner and let's see what he is able to do. Down the pit straight and across the line goes Sean Galayo to start his next uh, flying lap. And uh, his penultimate flying lap I should say because he's only got... Uh, five laps left according to his uh, his steering wheel there. Uh, just over five and a half minutes now left in this qualifying session to determine the grid for tomorrow's feature race. As Galayo goes through turn two. And around turn three goes the young Indonesian. Out of the corner heading down towards uh, turn four on the track. So now around he will go. As he now goes out of the corner heading up towards the left hander on the track. And Galayo 
so far looking at a clean lap at this stage now then as he heads out of the corner using a lot of curve on the outside there Goliath doing a good job in qualifying at the moment currently finds himself in p7 at the moment in the early trinity racing car looking to have a good weekend if he can here in spain it seems to suit him uh, quite a lot around here and uh, clearly he seems to be a better driver than what he was uh, back in season number uh, one when he was part of uh, emr when they were known as alitalia junior team and uh, he just seemed to languish around the back at that point. And uh, before the end of the season, he got dropped in favour of Louis Razier, who currently now is racing for Willows Grand Prix alongside Julian Palmer. So now Sean Goliath now then goes up towards the final corner then. And let's see what he can do. And Goliath, is this going to be an improvement for the Indonesian? Across the line, he will go. And it isn't. He stays in seventh place with that lap there then. Here is Sasha Fenestras in the Lopez Racing Development Car. Heading down the pit straight and across the line he will go. And he goes up to 17th with that lap as uh, Rosenquist is just starting a lap there then. De Vries has just started one as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets held up a little bit by Fenestras. Here comes Luca Giotto in the East Midlands racing car as he goes through the second to last corner. Up towards the final corner then he will go. Let's see what the Italian can do as he heads down the pit straight. And Giotto crosses the line and he stays... Excuse me, he stays... In 13th position, Nato starting a lap there. Then here comes Pierre Gasly, who crosses the line. Doesn't improve and stays in third place for the moment. As we now look at Jolly and Palmer on his final flying lap, it seems. And uh, I think Gasly's also finished as well. So Gasly finishes off his session. Looks like, at best, he's going to start third for tomorrow's feature race. Here comes Jolly and Palmer now. They're heading up towards the final corner. And let's see what he's capable of. Palmer crosses the line and improves to go up to 10th. So into the top 10 goes Jolly and Palmer. As uh, Sergei Sorokin now gets into the top 10. He pushes Palmer down, so up to 10th place goes Sorokin. Not an improvement for Lin. He stays in 6th place. Now behind Mashita stays in 8th place. No improvement for the Japanese driver. As we look at Santiago Yurishia in the Panasonic Makara Motorsport car. As Yurishia now then heading through the right-hander. And let's see what Yurishia is able to do now then. As he goes through the final corner and onto the pit straight he will go. And Yurishia crosses the line. And he stays in ninth place and improves on his best time with that. Uh, still 19th for De Vries. A disappointing qualifying session for him. Rosenquist doesn't improve. Says on 1 minute 22.190 on his final flying lap there then. We look at Norman Natto in the light base Sony racing car now then. He just goes through the final two corners on the track. And let's see what he is able to do then. Out of the final corner and onto the pit straight goes Norman Natto. And across the line he will go. And he goes up to 4th for that lap. So up to P4. Goes Norman Natto, and he pushes Russell down to fifth place as a result. So, that's that for Natto, and uh, that's that for these guys at the moment. And uh, we have just over two minutes remaining in the session, and uh, people will be wanting to go out and do their final flying lap soon, because they only have a few seconds uh, to go before pretty much uh, they will have no time at all to do a lap, as uh, Natto just goes through the, uh, the right-hander. And uh, that's that really. It's uh, Palmer now back into the uh, into the pits, and uh, we wait for some track, some pit activity to uh, to get us going now. Then, as uh, Nato just goes through that chicane there as he goes up towards the near flat turn eight on the track. As Louis Razio is coming out to the track just in the nick of time, I should say. And uh, anybody else doing the same, or uh, is everybody else just doing a mileage run? It appears that everybody else is doing mileage runs, and Razia will be the only one doing a flying lap, it appears, because he'll have just enough time to do a final flying lap, and he needs to, really, because he's way down in 18th. So far, Razia's just not got to grips uh, with his new team at the moment, as he finds himself down in 18th place. Disappointing uh, for the Brazilian at this stage. As uh, so he now just goes out of 10 4. On the track now then as he'll go up towards turn five and now through the left hander he will go as he uses a lot of the curb there on the outside as he heads down the hill towards turn six and seven on the track through the left and right hander he will go uh, so now flicking the car through the right hander as he now heads down towards the back straight towards the left hander he will go and uh, so now, as you can see, as uh, so now we go up towards the right-hander on the track. And uh, now let's see what Razia can do now then as he goes through the final few corners on the track. 
as he prepares to start his final flying lap. A few seconds left on the clock. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Checkered flag is out, and that is the end of the session then. Everybody else doing mileage runs apart from Razia. He's just done in done enough to do one more flying lap so the checkered flag has now officially come out everybody else is out on track other than Razia doing mileage runs to see if they can get a run to see what they can do for tomorrow's race in terms of setup and uh, as they go through the right hander Razia now then will go up towards the left hander on the track and uh, let's see what he is able to do now then as he uses a lot of curb there on the outside heading down the hill towards the uh, the left right chicane through he will go now then and uh, now up towards the right hander will go Louis Razia and uh, now he goes down the back straight towards the end of sector 2 there and uh, I don't know if he's on for an appointment we will wait and see when we get onto the final sector on the track now then as Razia approaches the final free corner and let's see what the Brazilian can do up towards the final two corners then on the track goes Louis Razia and let's see what he's able to do then round the final corner and onto the pit straight goes Louis Razia across the line he will go and he does not improve and stays 18th and there you have it then qualifying over and as a result for the second race in a row it is Felix Rosenquist who takes pole position for tomorrow's feature race here in Catalonia and a good and a good start to the weekend in order to pay respect to the team boss's grandfather who died I think just this last week and um so condolences there but there you have it then guys after all of that here is the grid for tomorrow's feature race it's Felix Rosenquist on pole position with Lando Norris in second Pierre Gasly in third with Norman Nato fourth George Russell fifth with Alex Lynn sixth Sean Goliath seventh Nobuharu Masashita eighth Santiago Yuichi in ninth Sergei Sorokin tenth Julian Palmer eleventh with Lance Stroll twelfth Dan Ticton thirteenth Mitch Evans in fourteenth and if we scroll down the rest of the field, it's Luca Giotto, 15th, Mick Schumacher in 16th, Sacha Fenestras, 17th, with Louis Razia, 18th, Nick De Vries, 19th, Yuri Vips, 20th, Lucas Jura in 21st, and due to his qualifying ban, Joel Eriksson is 22nd and last. But there you have it then, guys. That has been it for the qualifying session here for IFMC GP2. Their race taking place tomorrow at 2pm uh, BST. But stick around now, guys, because coming up next is the first qualifying session of the season for IFMC GP3. And uh, that gets underway in 18 minutes' time. So if you want to go and grab a quick drink, then you can. But until then, I've been JWF1, and I will see you guys in just a little bit. <laughs>